it's a bit sad when the coffee ends. It's something of a parting from something you loved. And you enjoyed your time together. You sipped through this glass and its warmth comforted you. But now it's gone. You try to take another sip, but there's only grains left in the cup. Satisfaction isn't there anymore. What am I talking about? Well, I'm Boaz Fowler. I'm an evolutionary astrologer, and this is the evolutionary astrology message for October 13th to 20th, 2018. What I'm talking about is that we are heading into a time that is a peak in this Venus retrograde cycle. If you saw, I think it was two videos away, uh, I talked a lot about this Venus retrograde uh, cycle. And we're heading, as we are heading to the end of October, we're heading into a peak time that is very, um, that could bring about a lot of changes in Venusian subjects. Changes in our relationships, changes in the way we provide ourselves with income, changes in what we believe is of value in our lives changes of how we regard our own value. Venus is not only about relationships with others, it's about our relationship with ourselves first and foremost. Remember there are two sides to Venus. The Rian side, internal side, and the um, Libra side, which is the external side. So the relationship with myself, am I satisfied with myself? What are the changes that need to be made so I would be more satisfied from who I am and from the role I play out here in this life? How can I increase my value in my own eyes and in the eyes of society around me? How can I draw in more value? And how could uh, I have more valuable relationships? And as we go through this time, First of all, this week is a magical week for bringing up those hard to talk about subjects, those things that were buried and now are crushing the ice at the surface, trying to get up and rise above the waters of consciousness. This is the time to actually delve in and pick those buckets of silt from the bottom of our oceans and examine them and know better what we're made of and communicate it sensibly and sensitively and sincerely and wisely within our relationship and to our beloveds. Understanding that although this is a week that could really be magical for bringing those subjects up, and for discussing them, for opening up and actually understanding both sides of the subject, understanding the intricate mechanisms that drive us to be and want and fear the things that we do. But we have to remember at the same time that the words that are going to be said this week are going to be next week's decisions. And these decisions are could be implemented for good or bad during the next few weeks. So the way we bring things up, the way we articulate ourselves, the way we, um, the way we send out our messages has a huge impact in the following weeks. And if we are not looking for a separation or a change, then we need to watch our step. And really be careful that we're not throwing away all around our Venusian life babies with our bathwater. Because at this time we could feel like the need to get ahead is so strong. Haste rises. Impulsivity rises. And there's absolutely no tolerance to people that are dragging behind or are dragging you behind. And we could be less than um, grateful and 
not as appreciative as we should regarding projects and people in our lives just because we want to move on. So be careful. Be careful not to do that. To be, uh, um, in your mind, always put the strategic effects of what you're doing today. And don't buy the ticket for the short term, for the short term thrill if it would hurt the long-term success of your happiness and contentment. Why if my hair is jumping, you're not saying anything? My hair thinks it's no gravity day today. I can't see myself, you know, I look in the camera, I see that it's like, but you should have told me, you know, the least you could do. Anyway. So, um, let's go down to the weekdays. So, 13th, Saturday, it's a great day to be outside, it's a very energetic morning, it's a great day to do all kinds of chores and activities, it's a great time for sex. Here, I said it, you know, this week is amazing for intimacy, amazing for intimacy and sex, and of course, and so, I encourage you to, to go intimate and have sex, <laughs> and if, if you have a loved one, if you have a cherished person, someone you like to have fun with, go ahead and indulge yourself this week. And that could actually help you understand yourself and understand those intricate mechanisms inside better. Understand what drives you to satisfaction better. Now, of course, that that sex, first of all, has to be consensual and safe and sane. And, again, don't go for the short term thrill over the long-term health of the matter. I don't want you enjoying yourself tonight if tomorrow you're going to feel hollow about it. Okay? It's about choosing the right person from the available stock and the right time and being adult about things. You know? But if you can divert some energy to sexual intimacy and intimacy at large during this week for communicating emotionally with your close ones, wonderful. Do it. Do it. Um, going on on Saturday, from the afternoon, we become a little more lethargic and tired. We can be more forgetful. This is already a time to be laying on the sofa after a good meal watching an oldie uh, or something, <clears throat> which probably wouldn't be very satisfying, that old movie, because it's square Neptune. The moon is squaring Neptune. So I don't know if, you, if you'll enjoy it so much, but you'll still relax. <laughs> um, same goes for watching a, a film outside or going to a gallery or a play or something like that. Anyway, Sunday the 14th, um, kind of uneasy day. You know the days that um, everything is heading on but not the pace and the ease that you would have wanted it to. It's like you're driving down the road and it's not a freeway, it's a traffic jam. Still getting ahead, but everything is really packed and annoying. And when I see these days coming up, I, I, you know, I already understand that people around me could be that way, that I could be a little more unsatisfied and agitated throughout this day. So I take a lot of tolerance with me. And if I walk with tolerance throughout that day, many times, it turns out to be an amazing day. Because my value increases in my own eyes, and my value in the eyes of other people surrounding me increases, and that feeds back on my uh, 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 feeling about myself. Because when you bring a necessity where it's really needed, your value rises. If I would be taking a, 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 a jerry can of water, you know, like a huge, huge trunk on water on my back and I would walk through the streets of New York and, you know, maybe cross Canada, people would say, he's crazy. Who is that guy carrying so much water on his back? But if I would go to, the one, of, to one of the uh, uh, um, very dry areas of the Sahara to one of the remote villages, we're finding clean water is precious, I would be the most important man in the village. 
I would be considered very wise and very rich for having so much water, clean water, at my availability. When we bring something that is of great need to where it is lacking, it's a blissful effect. So that's what I had to say about the 14th. The 15th is even more sensitive, in the morning at least. The moon is conjunct Saturn, squaring uh, uh, Chiron. Often a time that we feel a little unsure of ourselves, that we could be too scrutinous and too judgmental. It is a day to see things seriously, in an adult manner, in a responsible manner. But don't be too much of a hard ass about it. The afternoon onwards is much nicer, especially if you are in the company of people. If you are, this could be a really great time for conversation, for passing out of information that has to do some kind of um, Venusian theme. You know, if there's things to bring up on the table, this would be the night to do it. The 15th, there's a Mercury-Venus conjunction in the sky, and the moon is sextiling that conjunction. So it's a beautiful time to open up intimately. But remember that how you phrase things and what you say would have an impact, both on the 16th and in next week and in the coming weeks. Things would change according to, these, uh, uh, to this new information and a new paradigm that we bring up or, or look at for the first time at this time. And so just be aware of it. Be aware of it and, and make sure that you're seeding the right sprouts. Tuesday the 16th could be a little dramatic, as I said. This is a day to step away from your emotions, to look at things more logically. It's, it could be a little conflictual between males and females on a general level, as the sun is squaring the moon on that day. Wednesday, the 17th. Um, first of all, Tuesday night is a good night to go out and have fun if you want. Um, Wednesday, Wednesday is the kind of day that you could go out of your routine. It could be an unusual day. And sometimes it could be imposed on you. It wouldn't be your choice. Try and enjoy it. And my uh, advice for Thursday, I'm sorry, for Wednesday, the 17th, is be flexible. Be flexible and don't be too much of a rebel. Don't be too much of a, uh, 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 um, you know, somebody who's jumping ahead just because they want to show their uniqueness or, or, or be bold about things. It's not a day to be too rash in. Thursday, the 18th, that's a day that we should really watch our communication. That's a day, especially with relationships, that's a day that we could be too confrontational with the way we communicate and we could be a bit too aggressive. So, and our emotions could be turbulent. Again, it's a great day, especially from the afternoon onwards, for sex and intimacy or um, um, some physical activity, letting out that energy this way. The 19th, the 19th is a Friday. It's a very, there's a spiritual energy to that day uh, and, and an energy of art and creativity and talking to the muses. So if you're doing anything artistic or creative, this could be a wonderful day. And if uh, Saturday is a working day for you, it's a good day at your job and, and career as well. I'm sorry, was I on Friday or on Saturday? I was on Friday. So yes, Friday, Saturday, even though it's a weekend, they're both good for career matters and for getting ahead with projects that matter in our lives. So Friday is much more spiritual in its essence. Uh, there's a, a, a spirit of learning about all these natural, spiritual, artistic, creative, musical uh, um, areas in life. And 
we do have to watch ourselves from overindulgence as there is a square from the moon to Jupiter. We could want and, and need too much at that day, be too needy. So just be aware of that. And evening time, Friday evening, watch your communication. Again, we could be too confrontational. Saturday, the 20th, again, good for anything dealing with career, good for bringing up income, and good for spending with people you love and gaining a sense of uh, stability and tranquility because of it. So that's about what I had to say about this week. I have in front of me the uh, new edition of the Career Astrologer, OPA's uh, quarterly magazine. OPA is the uh, Organization for Professional Astrology. If you're not OPA members, I really suggest that you'll sign up. It's really worth it. There's tons of lectures for members all through the year and retreats and uh, meetups and online cafes and it just connects you to the most vibrant astrological community worldwide that I know of. And this is full of amazing information, really, really amazing information. Uh, well done, Maurice and the team. Well done, Arlen Weiss. And right now, all of the team is in iAstrologer in Tucson, Arizona, having the time of their life. Well done again you know bravo you've put so much energy into this and now there's a big bunch a big bunch a nice turnout of astrologers that are getting their professional tools and heading in a professional way into the realm of astrology not as a hobby not as another job but as a profession and that way helping themselves and helping, helping a lot of other people that they will be consulting and spreading the light of astrology and helping us as a society, as humanity, take that step forward into the age of Aquarius, into a place where there's a marriage between belief and science, between the, the realms of earth and heaven and between the sacred and the mundane, between male and female and maybe even rise, rises above all those dualities into something new. So, um, bravo everybody for that uh, uh, wonderful eye astrologer that you did. And I want to thank all of you for listening, for watching, for commenting, for sharing. Um, we're opening up a, a, um, a group for uh, just exercising natal charts. So if you want to join, let me know. Again, if you want to join the English course as well, for beginners, let me know. Um, and of course, for private consultations as well. And I hope this week is magical for you. And I hope you'll bring up the right things. I hope you'll bring them up the right way. And I hope that the consequences will be right for you. Because remember, at the end of October, these would be times that changes could happen. Changes in our relationships. Changes in our income changes in our jobs, changes in the way we perceive ourselves, changes in the things that we value. So, we want to be heading that way with a sure step. Take care, enjoy yourselves, and goodbye.